What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today I've got a match against my good friend Naomi, and I'm sick and tired of playing against OU teams, so today we're throwing it back to a nice low tier match here. Gotta love messing with some Mons that never get any time in the limelight, so this should be a pretty fun match here. She's got a really cool team. Uh, Naomi is a really good player, so it's uh, gonna be definitely an interesting match, and let's jump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and lead off with the pretty much the number one hoe in the whole Pokemon universe, and that is Low Punny, who actually uh, is a guy. So you play, play Girl Bunny out here. Um, Choice Scarf, Low Punny, it's going to be super useful for me in this match. I'm going to go right for the turn one U-turn. I uh, kind of expect the, st the Soul Rock to stay in and set up some Stealth Rock. But instead, she actually ends up switching into old Donald Trump looking ass Skuntank. And this is actually really nice for me because now I get a U-turn and I can decide a matchup that works well for me here. So, Skuntank is actually a pretty interesting Pokemon because there's a couple different ways this thing can be used. It can be full-on support with Hazard Control and the Defog, uh, or it could be offensive with either Physical or Special. So... I decided to go into the Clay Doll here just because I can set up my Stealth Rock. Um, I can kind of scare this thing away with an Earth Power. Plus, I would really like to get some chip damage off on this thing because it's kind of weirdly bulky. Um, but this thing is actually going to go ahead and hit me with a Toxic here. As you notice there, it actually sprays it out of the tip of its hair like some type of Stranger Things monster. I don't know. It's kind of gross. But uh, I do set up the Stealth Rock here. And seeing as this thing is actually Leftovers, it's probably going to be carrying the Defog. Uh, which is not great for me, plus Claydol being poisoned does kind of suck. This thing is meant to essentially just be a special defense wall with that uh, rapid spin support. But I'm just actually going to stay in here as the thing does in fact go for the defog, farts away the stealth rock, and I'm like, Why would you do that? We spent 45 minutes building that shit, dude. But that is fine. I'm just going to go right for an earth power here. Kind of expected some more damage, but honestly, Skuntank is like weirdly bulky and fast and honestly like kind of a... Kind of slept on mine. It's actually really interesting. But uh, that Earth Power does actually kind of put this thing in range to where later uh, it can be taken care of rather easily. And we should be in pretty decent shape. Now, Skuntank can carry uh, Dark Pulse, which I, I can take pretty nicely. I'm especially defensive Clay Doll here. But I'm actually going to end up going right for the Stealth Rock again because I'm kind of thinking she's going to switch out. Uh, as she does bring in the Soul Rock again, kind of expecting another Earth Power. Ain't no levitating going on today, says young Clay Doll, and I get back up my rocks, uh, which is pretty nice. Because there's things like the Glaceon over there. Uh, it's going to take coming back in to take Stealth Rock damage is nice. And overall, I know there's going to be quite a bit of switching and predicting going on in this match. Because like I said, uh, Naomi does know what she's doing. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to end up switching hard into the Relicanth here. Because I'm kind of expecting Soul Rock to probably go for... Uh, Stealth Rock of their own. As Grandpa gets to come in, Stealth Rock's flying right by his face, and he's like, what? He feels the wind, but honestly, he can't see it because his eyes aren't even open. Uh, but of course, this is a Choice Banded Relicanth, which actually hits super hard. And at this point, Waterfall is the obvious play, but I'm going to make a prediction here and expect the Poliwrath to come in, go right for a Zen Headbutt, get that super effective damage, and it does pay off because Pissed Off Frog comes in, ready to just absorb some water, but no, we are not going to moisturize you for free today. Grandpa says take this head to the face, and I'm able to get some pretty big damage uh, off on an otherwise pretty bulky Pokemon. Um, so that is pretty fantastic. That's going to put this thing in range to easily be taken out later, and Relicanth is out here doing the damn thing with his little red spot. Uh, so she actually ends up going for the switch again, goes into Soul Rock, kind of expecting me to probably just stay in, uh, go for another Zen Head, but I know that Poliwrath probably had a fighting move uh, to be able to hit Relicanth pretty hard. I could potentially have lived it, but I know um, that I do kind of want to conserve Relicanth, as I actually end up switching into Molly, expecting the um, some type of fighting move, and Dust Ducks would have been great with that, although now I'm staring the sun right in the face, and boy are my corneas getting pretty fucked up over here. Um, but I decided to go for a pretty risky play here. Now I'm thinking I could go for a Quiver Dance, and if she over predicts, I could be pretty set up here with the Dust Ox. So I go for the Quiver Dance, knowing damn well that I'm weak to rock, and this thing's probably carrying Rock Slide. Uh, in hindsight, kind of a bad play here, because obviously she is just going to go right for the Rock Slide here, and that takes care of the Dust Ox. It was kind of hard for me to want to switch into anything there. Um, and Dustox wasn't looking too great in this matchup regardless, so I decided to kind of go for the, pay the payoff option there, uh, which, you know, did not work out for me. I probably should have just gone for a Bug Buzz, get a little bit of damage off, and be on my way. But, uh, good news is, now at least I get a free switch into whatever I would like, and I decide to go into Clay Doll here. Now, the reason for this is because I know this thing can't hurt me too bad at all. 
Uh, Clay Doll is not super useful for me in this matchup, and I'm just going to go right for a rapid spin here. I do have the Ice Beam coverage against the Soul Rock, which I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot with. But Clay Doll is still my best option here because honestly, this Soul Rock is kind of scary to my team. I don't really have much that wants to deal with it. Uh, of course, I could go back into Relicanth and potentially go for the Waterfall, but then you risk plays back into the Poliwhirl, and then if I overpredict and Zen Headbutt this thing, uh, then it just gets free Earthquake damage. And kind of this thing, this pointy asshole's put me in a little bit of a of a bad spot here. But I get this the rapid spin off, get that nice little speed boost. And now this allows me to at least start to whittle this thing down with an Ice Beam. Uh, Claydol's kind of designated at this point to whittle in this fella down. As she actually overpredicts there, goes for the Will-O-Wisp. I likely expecting a switch into the Relicant there. But like I said, kind of too risky of a play for me. As I know I do kind of want to keep that thing around. So freaking Sunrock is over here having a picnic eating some leftovers. Meanwhile, Clayblade is uh, is taking some pretty... Stacking damage here with the with the Toxic. So I'm just going to continue to go for the Ice Beam. Like I said, I would really like to continually get some damage off on that Soul Rock to make it you know manageable later. As she actually decides to make a move into the Glaceon here on the incoming obvious Ice Beam. And uh, Hypothermia in his sweet boots is going to take nothing from that, of course. Uh, but the Stealth Rock is greatly helpful there. As uh, you know, I'm going to pretty much have to just sack off Claydol here. As I don't really have anything that wants to switch into this thing. I mean, potentially Relicanth. Uh, but at this point, there's really no not much of a reason to keep... Um, the clay doll around potentially for you know rapid spin stuff but since I am faster I just decide to go right for an earth power here get a little bit of damage off on this thing as they're gonna go for the water pulse I'm guessing uh, expecting a potential switch into Houndoom uh, but like I see it's kind of just too risky as clay doll is not super useful so I let that thing go down and now I get a free switch into Scooby Doom himself um, freaking hell dog over here can potentially scare scare some stuff out potentially get a nice little nasty plot set up um, but I'm just gonna go right for the flamethrower here as it's my safest bet of course I outspeed and Glaceon may be looking good in the sweet boots but does get taken care of and I am the better the better dog today my dude so she now gets a free switch into whatever she would like and Houndoom is a very scary doggo at this point uh, because it outspeeds everything and hits super hard with the life orb plus a lot of uh, the mons have done some work in kind of chipping things down. So, uh, in comes Skuntank. I just go right for the flamethrower here as it actually somehow lives. I don't know what the hell you're feeding this Skuntank, but it is able to live that and go for the defog here. Uh, so again, farts away my stealth rock and uh, it's kind of, uh, kind of unfortunate. I really expected that to kill. Um, but, you know, Skuntank is just full of surprises and gas. So... Uh, here I know that before this thing wants to die, it's probably going to go for a Sucker Punch, so I can predict that, go right for a Nasty Plot, as I do get that correct, luckily, and now at this point, Skun or, uh, <laughs> Houndoom is looking extremely scary, with that plus two special attack with the Life Orb, I'm super fast, and about to just have myself a time, so... Uh, I'm going to take care of this gun tank with a flamethrower, as it is able to get another sucker punch off. I mean, there's no reason for me to nasty plot again. I really only needed plus two. Um, of course, being dark type, you know, it's not going to hurt too much, but it is able to at least get some chip damage. Uh, before going down. So Skuntank finally dies. Super annoying Pokemon out of the way. And you love to see it. So, free switch. They decide to go into Electivire. Now, there's only one thing that means. And that means this is probably going to be Choice Scarf, and I'm really hoping it's not. So I go for the foul play here. Ends up actually, yeah, being Choice Scarf. Outspeeds the Houndoom and takes care of me. I thought I was going to get myself a nice little late game sweep, but Electivire had some other plans, and uh, you, you hate to see it. But uh, there's one way around this Electivire, and that is pretty much with my own cho Choice Scarfer, as Low Punny is a little bit faster, and I can kind of get some pretty big damage with a high jump kick although i do need to whittle it down before that uh, because a high jump kick is not quite going to knock it out from that health range so uh, i actually end up going for the u-turn kind of expecting the electivire to stay in but she knows at this point this low pony is going to be choice scarf and knows uh, that that electivire is super important in kind of her win condition in this match so i go for the u-turn as the soul rock comes in that's actually pretty nice for me, as now I get a free switch into the Drift Blim. Now, ordinarily, not the greatest matchup here, um, but this Drift Blim is actually a pretty interesting and fun set that I've really kind of enjoyed messing around with here. So, we get a nice little showcase of the Drift Blim, as I'm going to go for the 
Substitute kind of expected a rock slide there, but to my surprise, she ends up going into the Polyrath, and this is not too bad for me as I get up my nice little bean bag, and I'm kind of worried about being able to set up against this thing. I know it's probably going to have some coverage against me. Um, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead, go right for a Shadow Ball here, hopefully take care of this thing, and uh, still have a substitute potentially against an Electivire. As long as, you know, I have a sub up against the Evire, I'm Gucci. But uh, Shadow Ball actually knocks this thing down to red. It does, in fact, live, and it reveals that it's going to go for the Scald, um, which is actually interesting because Special Attacking Polyrath is kind of unexpected. My guy's just not even using his big old gloves over there. Just decides to be a special set, which actually kind of I, I, I do prefer over the physical set. Um, but I'm going to go for a substitute here again. Now, here is the idea behind this Drift Blimp. So I'm able to substitute, taking some health away. If I can get myself to the point where I'm able to activate my Citrus Berry, that does two things, both heals me and activates my ability called Unburden. Uh, which gives me a massive speed boost and will allow me to speed outspeed the rest of her team. So all I kind of have to do with this Polyrath over here as it kind of goes for the, the rest there, revealing that it is going to be Sleep Talk. So quite the interesting Polyrath set. Still not sure uh, if it has Ice Beam or any coverage against me, but I'm now going to go for a Calm Mind here. And since this thing's resting, I'm going to need, you know, some boost to be able to take care of this thing with my only damaging move that is Shadow Ball. So, goes for the Sleep Talk here. A little bit of a gamble as it kind of randomly selects a move uh, from your move slots. It does end up getting a Scald, but since I do have that special defense boost from the Calm Mind, uh, I am able to take that. So, that's actually super nice. And at this point, I kind of just need to start whittling this thing down. I'm thinking it's probably a two-hit KO uh, at this range, and it's pretty much just there. Um, but if I can still end up this matchup with a substitute, I can uh, potentially take care of the Electivire. And that's kind of my main goal here. Um, so it actually Sleep Talks again, does get another Scald. And that's honestly not bad for me. Because what that does is allows me to set up another substitute. Which does put me in range for my Citrus Berry. Therefore activating the Unburden ability. And Blimp is about to do some stuff. So... I am, of course, going to go for another substitute, bring out a Beanie Baby like it's the 90s all over again, and Dead Zeppelin is now a little bit hungry, eats that Citrus Berry, uh, which does bring me back to half, and we're looking pretty nice here. So, uh, two rest turns have gone by, so this thing knows it's going to wake up. She ends up going for the Scald, but, of course, um, I am able to take that, even not able to break my... Uh, my substitute. Actually, interested to see what the the next move slot is on this thing. It's probably something like Focus Blast, I'd imagine, um, just for a nice little stab. But I'm just going to go for another Shadow Ball here, and after the leftover recovery, it's actually not quite in range for the Shadow Ball to kill. But it's fine. If this thing decides to rest again, this is going to be annoying. Plus, we're actually getting pretty close to the timer in this match as uh, another Scald does break the substitute. So like I mentioned, we actually had a notification come up at this point. I think it was cut out, but uh, we have three minutes left in the match as Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl only have a 20 minute battle timer, which is super cringe. What the hell, Game Freak? I know this, wasn't, this isn't even Game Freak, but still. Um, I'm gonna go for the Shadow Ball here. Now my best play there would have been going for the substitute again so that I could have a sub against the Electivire matchup, but there's no time. We gotta try to do what we can uh, to win this match in the time we have left. So in comes the Electivire. Now, even though this thing is Choice Scarf, I am unburdened and I can go for the Destiny Bond, which is kind of the only situation where uh, Drift Blim wins this matchup. So the Destiny Bond, able to connect, and then the Wild Charge does take me out. So that is one way to delete an Electivire, kind of the only way that I was going to be able to take care of this thing, and that is the Drift Blim set working pretty much exactly how it's supposed to. Uh, you're supposed to potentially be able to get a little mini sweep before you Destiny Bond some stuff, but still you love to see it, and Electivire, the win condition kind of goes down. So, on the empty battlefield here, I decided to go into Grandpa as a Choice Band Waterfall, should be able to finish off the match here. As she gets a Willow miss, Grandpa says these old knees can still dodge some shit, and that is extremely unfortunate on her end. Um, but the Waterfall Choice Bandit is going to be able to take care of the Soul Rock. And last Pokemon is going to be Old Jazz Hands, which is an amazing nickname, <laughs> Mr. Mime, who is going to be able to outspeed me. So Relicanth, all you got to do is live an attack here. Does actually go for the Psychic, and I'm like, oh shit. Um, knocks me down to 22 with a critical hit, which is amazing. And Grandpa is going to be able to land a Waterfall before, right before the timer ends. And with that Choice Band, it is going to be able to take care of the Mr. Mime. So... 
That match came right down to literally the last second. And uh, quite the interesting game there for sure. I still had the Choice Scarf low punny in the back, luckily. Uh, but regardless, great game. Naomi's always really fun to play against. And uh, I had a really fun time in that. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button. And I will catch you next time. Peace out.